I want to thank everyone who has been praying, sending support, blessings, and caring for every time I've asked for prayer or support. It is of enormous value. And at this time, to share and show love for each other is absolutely the most valuable and precious thing. So I truly want to thank everyone who's been praying, as well as sending comments and leaving love and support. I come here in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. This is out of His graciousness and His generosity in sharing information, knowledge, and wisdom with us so that we may go back to the Word of God, which is our only authority, and confirm and learn directly from the Holy Spirit what is that the Lord needs us and wants us to do now because yes, indeed, there are things the Lord wants us to be doing out of obedience to his word and things he has for each one of us. These are two messages combined, of which I'll share an explanation at the end. The first message came on June 7th, 2023 at 3.41 p.m. Worry not, son, for the time comes when all things will be exposed. For you have done well, son, worry not. For my ways are your ways. I guide you in all things. Fear not, son, for the time has come. And you have done well. Fear not, for I am here. Soon the clock will strike and in parentheses I wrote 12 and you will see the Son of Man descending in the clouds as it is written the clock strikes twice and aren't there 12 hours in one day in parentheses I write brings to memory Jose's 48 hours is the two days of or 2,000 years, 1948, and 4 times 8 is 32. 48 plus 84 is 2032. Write, son, that I come quickly. I am at the door. In parentheses I write, brings to memory Sister Brigitte's 7-7, seven, seven, as in Matthew 7-7. Seven, seven which leads us to Revelation 4.1. Retire now, son. Share the message. Love, Lord Jesus, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, Abba. Amen. The second message came on 7-21-2023 at 4.35 p.m. Right, son, I am with you and I will never leave you. You have done well. Worry not. At the door, when the clock strikes, you will find the key, for a key is given to those who seek. Seek, and you shall find, for the key opens when you open, and none can shut, in parentheses, it. Fear not, son, I am with you, and nothing can touch you without my, in parentheses, consent, permission. I am at the door, son. The hour has come, and many are found unworthy, lost in unrepentance, self-willed, and the cares of the world. Fear not, thou hour, son, I lead you. Rest, son, the hour comes, and now is, when you shall see the Son of Man descending in the clouds in parentheses of glory, a time and a season. Rest now, son, I love you, fear not. Lord Jesus, Yeshua, Abba, Holy Spirit, Amen. In Zephaniah 1, starting in verse 2, it says, the Lord says, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, says the Lord. Verse 3, I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man 
from off the land, says the Lord. And then when we go down to verse 6, it says, And them, still be consumed, that are turned back from the Lord, and those who have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for him. So without doing a long teaching on seeking, it is very clear that without seeking, there is great uh, repercussions. And so the Lord is commanding us to be seeking him. And when we seek him, we seek him with all of our hearts. So this must seeking, which is Zephaniah 1.6, also connects us with Hebrews 11.6. And so you can see the 1.6 and the 11.6 together. So Hebrews 11.6 tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For ye that comes to God must believe, believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the emphasis on seeking is extraordinary. In fact, it comes with punishment if you're not seeking him. So this leads us through the message that we read to Matthew 7.7. 7. So in Matthew 7.7, 7, we read it, For everyone that asks, receives, and he that seeks, finds and him that knocked to him that knocks it shall be open so we immediately know the 7 7 connection matthew 7 7 with the seek but also with the door that open now look at the 7 7 of the door will open it connects us with revelation for one and revelation for one says this is John. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as aware of a trumpet talking to me, which said, Come up either, and I will show you things which must come thereafter. So we know this is the rapture, but look, it's 7-7, seven, seven, and 7 plus 7 is 14, which is palindrome or inverse for 41, which is 4-1. So we know that 7-7... Seven, seven, and for one are connected. And so as we seek, then knock, the door will open. And what is that door? This is the door that opens in heaven, which is the rapture. So it's, it's a fundamental important as we look at these passages and connections and commands and how they lined up on what we now understand is the clock. So in the message, the Lord says, soon the clock will strike tw 12 and, and by 12 and, and it's twice 12 or 12, but the 12 is lined up, if you look at the watch, it's just 12, 3, 6, 9, and then you have 10, 11, and 12. And so in the same way, we understand that the the count of sevens, 7 times 12, put it over here, 7 times 12 is 84. And that 84 is 1948, or 48 palindrome to 84. So 1948 plus 84 is 32. Also, 8 times 4 is 32. So we know that 84 and 48 are well connected. Of course, we know Anna from Luke 336 uh, being 84. So we've, we've taught about this a lot. But what we can see now is the Lord is saying soon it will strike 12. So soon it will be the 84 years. So these 84 years line up then the 12th with 84, but then the 11 with 77. Because 7 times 12 is 84, but 7 times 11 is 77. What is that? That's the 11th hour. That's the last hour when the workers go out, they still pay the penny, to harvest uh, in the field. And so this is the last stretch of time, which is 7 years, Okay, that will run into the last hour when the clock strikes 12, 84 years have passed. So what we're focusing on is the 7-7 seven, seven when the door opens and the 4-1, which is 7 plus 7, 14 and 41. Now, this would line up with the start of tribulation, which is in 2025. How do we know this? Because uh, of all these good reasons, but 1260 days plus 1260 days equals 2520 days, pointing to 2025, which also lines up with the clock and everything else. So the idea is that the rapture will most likely, Hebrews 11.6, happen before 2025. 
and uh, it could happen anytime really, but it is important to now understand the second concept, which we spoke about it before, which is, as the Lord says in the message, are on their 12 hours in a day, and that comes from John 11, 9, 12 hours, one day, as opposed to the 24 hours, which is the day and the night, which is a full day, but the Lord is referring to the 12 hours of the day portion. Now, we know from 2 Peter 3, verse 8, and that's 1,000 years is a day. And in that verse, it says it twice, twice. So we know that's relating to the two days. And we talked about that. But so when we put these things together, then 1,000 years also is 12 hours, which means one hour is 83.33 years. And that's still counting from 1948 when we add the 83.33 years is 2031. And that's why 2 Peter 3, 23 Verse 8, 23 plus 8, is also 31, both lining up with the uh, likely second coming. And so when we go back seven years from that, that 77 lands on 2024 and uh, the tribulation on 2025, because 2025 will be related to the 84-year count, but the 24 or 2024 will relate to the 83.3 three years count. That's because the Lord says... Unless the days were shortened, no flesh would survive. So we understand how urgent the times are. And the idea is the Lord wants everybody to be ready. And being ready is more than simply having said that you believe in Christ once. He also wants obedience and wants us to follow him and to read his word. Now, don't take it from me. Go straight to his word because the Lord tells us the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. And so I wouldn't take it from a man, not me or anyone else, anyone else, but I would go straight to the Word of God and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you all things and to be 100% sure that you understand Scripture, not the doctrine of man or somebody on any channel or social media which tells you what you should or should not believe. So it is important now that you do this work of seeking the Lord with all of your heart have you read as you read in Zephaniah, as we read it earlier in the message? I invite you to continue to go back to the Word of God. I ask you to be obedient to what the Lord tells you to do. He's coming for a bride that is pure and spotless and at peace. And that means a process of refining, purification, sanctification, which is done by the Holy Spirit in you. And so you want to make sure that you align with the Holy Spirit to do this work. And the message we read about or heard about unforgiveness, unrepentance from the world, cares of the world, and self-willing. That means that you decide which parts of the Word of God are good and which parts are not so. This is not a time to be selective about the Word of God, but it is time with humble meekness to go back to Him, to the Word, Ask him to teach you all things, and he will lead you in all things. I've been meeting on Zoom meetings twice over the weekends, and I invite you to come and join us. Uh, it is a time where I'm able to spend more than just a few minutes um, on a video to explain some of these ideas. And we are praying as well as getting ready and understanding what the Lord is asking us to do. Do not be deceived. Go to the Word of God. Don't listen to me or any man or woman, but listen to the, what the Word of God has to say. I hope this message was a blessing. I thank everyone again. God bless you.